we had a lot of follow-up questions about uh, how to actually stud your own running shoes uh, after we posted our last video about winter running and traction aids. Um, so I figured I would do a separate video on how to actually install studs in your shoes. Um, so the product we're going to be using for this one is the uh, Grip Studs Traction Aids. Uh, so it's a shoe, what is it, anti-slip screw-in stud kit. So I picked this up at uh, Ski Up Hill out in Canmore. Uh, it comes with 28 studs and the installation tool, everything that you need to put some studs into your own shoes. Um, so inside the package, you get uh, the little studs that are just these little tiny metal guys. Then you also get the um, basically a screwdriver handle and the most important piece, the installation tool. So this one, it works on a standard screwdriver. So I'm actually gonna use, I've got this nice short little screwdriver here. I find that works a little nicer because I can actually use my hand to push hard when I'm screwing into the shoe rather than using kind of a standard screwdriver that it comes with. So that's what I'm going to be using. And what we're going to be doing today is taking a set of Ashley's older Solomon boots. Um, they still got some life left in them, but they're on their way out. So we're going to take these boots and we're going to stud them. Um, she uses these shoes a fair amount just for walking, not a ton of running in these ones. The boots she uses for walking as well. So. Um, a shoe like this comes with the studs in it. It's got a waterproof upper and um, Vibram outsole with the studs already installed. The main downfall of something like this, uh, especially if you're going to be walking, is uh, because it has that low cut on it, you get snow inside and then your feet get cold and wet. So uh, Ashley likes for walking, uh, running, she goes with a running shoe, but for walking, she just uses a standard boot. So some of the, sometimes the pathways around our house get pretty icy. So we're going to stud these so she's got them ready to go for winter time. Um, the best way to kind of figure out where you want to stud the shoe is if you flip it over, if it's a shoe you've put some miles on, like these ones, you can see the areas where there's lots of wear. So if we've got some wear kind of through the heel on the back here, lots of wear just on the inside here, and then some wear kind of right across the forefoot. So if you kind of hold your shoe this way, you can usually see where the tread is a little bit deeper, not a lot of contact with the ground here. Where the treads start to get shallower, that's the spots that you've worn them down. Those are the spots where your foot's hitting the ground, usually you're twisting a little bit, there's a little bit of motion. If you have a stud there, it's going to grip really nicely and give you some traction. So generally you want to space the traction out um, across the ball of the foot, a little bit at the front, and then a fair amount on the heels. So that way if you're going downhill, you're on your heels, you've got some studs in place. If you're going uphill, you've got some studs in place on the forefoot, and then if you're just walking on the flats, heel and toe are both in contact with the ground. So I'm going to start, the way I'm going to stud these ones is I'm going to put three studs kind of just across the ball of the foot, right down the middle of where that wear pattern is. And then I'm going to put two more studs um, just kind of in the front here. So two studs there, three across the ball of the foot, and then I'm going to put a few kind of in a semicircle around the heel so that when you're going down, if you have it too far forwards, like if you start putting studs kind of in here, when you're going down a steeper hill, you're just on the very edge of the uh, edge of the shoe and you're going to slip out because you're not going to have that stud in place. So you can kind of play around with it. The beauty with these is it's a very small hole that it puts into the rubber and you can kind of readjust. You can take it out, move it somewhere else if you find that it's not working that well. So how we're going to do this is we're going to take our installation tool. We're going to take the stud and the stud has two little holes in the side that line up with these notches in the tool. So I slide those in place and you can kind of wiggle it around until it feels secure. So now I've got my stud mounted on the installation driver, and then I'm gonna pick my first spot for a stud. So I'm gonna kind of find just across in the middle of that area. So I'm gonna start on the outside here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a fair amount of pressure. I need that tip on the stud to start to bite and grip in. So I'm gonna add a little bit of pressure and get it turning, and then I'm just gonna carefully get that stud screwing in. You'll kind of find as soon as it grips, you'll feel it start to go in. And then you want to be careful, you don't want to put it in too far. If you try to put it in too far, it will just kind of strip the hole out and pull out a kind of a plug of rubber. And then that stud isn't going to stick anymore. So you want to have it tight, but not super tight. And basically that stud, um, kind of the base of it should be flush. And then it's going to have this little metal spike that sticks up. So it's going to look something like that. And now if you're on any ice, you've got these tungsten carbide spikes that stick out of the bottom of your shoes. So I'm going to go ahead and stud the rest of this and then I will show you the finished product.
All right, so um, for a finished product, that's kind of what I ended up with. So you kind of see the light glint off all those studs that I put in there. So a couple things that I found while I was doing this is um, the further that I got away from these areas of high wear, the deeper the tread gets. So kind of one example of that is this stud that I put in up at the front here. Um, because the tread up here is less worn, it's a little bit deeper. If you actually look at it from the side, so you can see how these studs here stick up and so those are going to be touching the ground. This one here isn't going to hold on very well because it doesn't stick out very far. So that one I'm going to have to move around. I'm going to have to try and figure out what else I'm going to do up there. So that's one of the big things is if you have a shoe, like if you look at these guys as an example, uh, they've got these really big fat lugs and then this, each of the studs sits right in the middle of one of those lugs. So if you've got a shoe with a big fat lug pattern, you want a stud on the lug. If you go kind of next to them, it's not even come close to being in contact with the ground. So it's a little tougher with a boot like this just because it's a fairly fine tread pattern. So I've kind of hit across the ball of the foot here where that tread pattern's worn down. And I've also got quite a few along the edge of the back of the heel here. And then in the middle uh, where that logo is, where it says Solomon, it's fairly low there as well. So um, went with a stud right there just to make sure that that's going to get in contact. So we'll head out, we'll try these out. Um, and then this is one of those kind of ongoing projects where you got to um, like if you find like, oh, like I really noticed that when I'm doing this activity, I'm still slipping out. Maybe you're more here on the heel. Then you can just, since you've got extra studs, because I've got, I've got nine studs in here. We've got enough in this kit for 14 per shoe. So I've got extra studs that I can kind of add as I go. Um, and it's just kind of something that will adapt over time. But um, when you use these, make sure you're not walking across your hardwood floors or something at the house because you've got that metal sticking out that's going to scratch up your floors. But yeah, if you've got any more questions about uh, how to install them or other tips to go with that, um, let us know. We're happy to answer any questions. And thanks for sticking around.